Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin with a dastardly attack by Boko Haram fighters in Jobe State. The insurgents killed about 40 people between Monday and Tuesday. The Boko Haram fighters shot at villagers where about 17 people died and set off a landmine, which killed about 20 others who went for a burial in Gaydam local government area. Chile. Ah, I thought we've seen the last of this. And um, with uh, the coming in of um, President Bola Metinubu and the selection of new service chiefs, I thought we would have stemmed the tide of Boko Haram and eliminate the threats called Boko Haram once and for all. Well, I, as I always say here, is um, this is not a threat that will go away immediately. We just have to keep working hard at exterminating the threat. But um, to imagine that these guys will fizzle out just like that, it's not going to be easy. Uh, in the Gaydam area, in the Babangida area of um, Yobe State, Boko, Boko Haram still has considerable presence. In fact, there was a time that they overran Gaydam and a lot of our people, residents of Gaydam, had to flee into Cameroon. That was, I think, the week that the immediate past uh, Inspector General of Police was even uh, appointed. And uh, <laughs> when he called me, we were cracking jokes about the fact that Boko Haram took over his hometown. So the threat is there, especially close to the border with Niger Republic. One problem a country will always face is if you have a country close to you that is a failed state. I've always said that Niger Republic is a failed state. There are so many parts of Niger Republic where you cannot say this is the person in charge. So Boko Haram still finds um, places for hibernation in Niger Republic. You know, uh, Gaydam, Babangida, all those communities close to that area. They are close, I mean, they have considerable Boko Haram presence. And you just can't dismiss um, uh, the activities totally. We have to keep working hard. Where our people fail, they have deals in some in areas where they have considerable presence. And in such areas, they simply tell our people, pay your taxes. If you are prepared to pay your taxes to us, uh, what they call harvest tax. When it's time for you to harvest, we'll let you have access to your farms. But if you choose not to pay uh, harvest tax, then you, you, you risk losing your life. And uh, that is what uh, happened in this case. When, again, you invite security agents to deal with the threat that they constitute, sometimes Boko Haram fighters will come back and punish you for inviting the military to come and uh, um, deal with their fighters. That was what led to the massacre in Koshibe, where they used knife to cut off the heads of more than 60 rice farmers. You know, Koshibe in, in Borno State, uh, I did a documentary about that attack. So the threat has not gone away. In fact, the governor was warning, the governor of Borno State was warning that if we do not do something about IDPs, who are taken to drugs, who are taken to prostitution, mm. a good number of them will become food soldiers Good. for Boko Haram. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the society has to prepare can be to accommodate the them, mm. to, to, to keep them busy. Otherwise, these guys will dangle carrots in their faces and they will eventually uh, work for Boko Haram. So it's unfortunate that um, uh, within a short time, in Yobe, where you would think that, okay, the threat uh, probably doesn't exist anymore. They will be killing more than 40 people within a couple of days. It's, uh, it's really terrifying. Setting up of landmines <laughs> in our, you know, mm. could be very dangerous. Look at the number of casualties claimed now. Well, at least from the reports, um, I also would thank God it's that minimal because if you set up, just set up a landmine, you know what it means. It's just for it to be triggered. And, um, well, like Biki said, tackling terrorism is always. Um, not um, a tea party. No, it's not a one-day job. 
it's something you have to keep at all of the time. Because as some are being killed, others are being recruited. And what do these people in the villages, what do they do? Very little. Rather than to obey them, because like we have seen, it's not possible to deploy security agents in all villages. Virtually impossible. And this is not a conventional war. These people know where you are part time. As in the security forces, they know where they are part time. So once they settle um, in a certain village and they need to move, they know that that village is vacant. And so they attack those soft targets and not the military. So it's not something that will go away in one day. You just have to keep working at it and hoping that at some point, some of these full soldiers and their leaders will also have a rethink about what they are doing. Okay.